Last year, 64,000 Americans died from a drug overdose, most of them victims of an opioid epidemic. Now, most of these Americans were adults, and so most media coverage and policy focused on this epidemic have focused on adults. But what about kids? There's a way that parents' opioid misuse might spill over and affect children, because opioid misuse can impair a parent's ability to adequately supervise, care for, or bond with their child. What should be done for these children? Right now, data suggests that many of them are ending up in foster care, but that's a bad approach because separating children from their parents is harmful and disruptive to development. I like to say that my discipline, public health, has two foundational principles, evidence and empathy. Both of these principles emphasize meeting the needs of these families as a unit, rather than splitting them up, because evidence shows there are effective treatments for opioid addiction, and these treatments can help keep children safely in their homes and out of foster care while well, empathy reminds us that we should treat addiction just as we would any other chronic illness like diabetes. My dissertation addresses three questions essential to this public health response. How many adults with children have an opioid addiction? How many of them are receiving any kind of treatment? And if not, why? And what policies are helping? And using data from a nationally representative survey, I've already begun to answer some of these questions. It turns out there's likely more than 800,000 American adults with an opioid addiction who live with at least one child, and fewer than 30% of these adults report receiving any form of treatment. I find that these adults with children are less likely than their counterparts without children to say they won't get treatment because they're not ready to stop using. Instead, they're more likely to say they can't find the kind of treatment they think they need. And this is consistent with other research showing that most addiction treatment programs don't offer childcare. I also find that these adults with children are more likely to say that they won't get treatment because they're afraid a friend or coworker might find out. And this emphasizes the public health importance of empathetic communication that does not hold these parents morally culpable for their illness. In the future, I'll be looking at policies designed to combat the opioid epidemic. Most of these policies, like prescription drug monitoring, are designed to prevent overdose deaths, but I'll be looking to see if they help keep kids out of foster care as well. This evidence can inform an empathetic public health response one that helps families heal instead of splitting them up because of a preventable, treatable illness. Thank you.